Well, good morning. We are thankful to God for another first day of the week, for the opportunity to assemble together as His children, to worship Him, and we pray that our worship today will be acceptable to Him. For those of you that are unable to be with your church families, we want you to know that we continue to pray for you, whether it's due to illness or whether it's due, due to the effects of the COVID virus that you just can't get out and meet, whatever it may be, we lift you up. Uh, that God will bless you and you'll be able to be with your church family in the near future. If you can't assemble with your church family and would like to join us in our Bible study, uh, we encourage you to do so. Uh, our Sunday evening class is available via Zoom, as well as our Wednesday evening Bible study, Wednesday at 6.30 and Sunday at 6 o'clock. And if you'd be interested in being a part of those studies together, uh, please contact me or the church here at Groveland, and we'll make sure that you have the necessary information uh, to join us as we study God's Word. A number of folk here at the Groveland congregation we want to continue to pray for. Uh, for Betty Ann as she recovers from her surgery. Continue to pray for Kevin Frank. Continue to pray for Marga. Uh, her health continues to, uh, to deteriorate, and we just want to lift her up. Uh, and pray God's blessings and strength be upon her. We have a number of, of our members who deal in the health field. Uh, Lori Frank, uh, Shauna Mosley, Amber Stewart, uh, Renee Leininger, and as well as uh, Christopher Radford, who's the grandson of dear, dear friends of ours here at Groveland. Uh, all of these uh, on a regular basis are in, to some degree or another in harm's way because of the work they do. Pray for them. Pray for the doctors and the first responders who care for those who are sick, especially as they deal with these very contagious uh, viruses and diseases. We ask your prayers for the church here at Groveland. Uh, that God will continue to bless us, that we can grow together, we can grow in spirit and truth, we can grow in number, uh, that to God be honor and glory now and forevermore. And we uh, invite you to come see us as we worship the Lord here at this good place. We meet here on Sunday mornings for our worship at 1030. And uh, you're invited to come to share with us in time together of worship and fellowship together to our Lord. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Corinthian Christians, 
said to them, but thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. The inspired writer of the Hebrew letter makes this observation for us in chapter 9, beginning verse 11. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. By the means of his blood, that Jesus shed for us on Calvary, the soul-cleansing, soul-saving power of his blood. With that blood that he shed for us on Calvary and in memory of that great sacrifice and with his body that was broken for us, Jesus yielding himself to the pain of the cross, gave himself as that eternal sacrifice. Today, we as Christians remember that sacrifice. We remember God's inexpressible gift. We remember the price that Jesus paid in giving his own life to save ours, to save our souls. Just a few hours before Jesus would be crucified, he met with his apostles, and there in that time together, as they observed the Passover together one last time, Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, this memorial feast. And these are his words recorded for us by Matthew in chapter 26. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. That more perfect blood, better than the blood of bulls and goats that couldn't take away sins, but the blood of Jesus can. And for those of us who have been baptized into Christ for the remission of those sins, we have been cleansed by his soul-saving blood. Today, this first day of the week, we commemorate, we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior. And may God help us as we take this bread that represents his body, as we drink this blood, as we drink this fruit of the vine that represents his blood, may he help us do so in a way that is truly pleasing to him.